So we did something that I know is gonna be controversial to some of you. Good. I haven't been here in a while. Hello, yeah. everyone. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the things we're gonna be talking about. <laughs> All right, today's video is gonna be split up into two pretty distinct sections. One is like some announcements for those of you that are wondering what the heck is going on on this channel. And the second part is about sex ed with kids and an experiment we tried this week. If you wanna skip straight to the sex ed part, just go to this time code here and forget about the announcement part. But for those of you that are still here, we want to give some updates on what has been happening with this vlog channel and maybe what you could expect in the future. It's been a challenging little bit here for me. We've made a thousand videos, we celebrated four years, and for the last couple months, I feel like the quality or at least my energy level for investing in the vlog has gone down. And there's a couple reasons for this, at least that I'm aware of. One is that I'm working on a bunch of other projects right now that require a lot of my attention, both emotionally and practically. One of these is the Appalachian Trail book, which we are now so close to being done with. But as you guys saw from the most recent travel video that I made, I just outlined three more books. And books are something that I'm really excited about because I feel like the type of messages I wanna share, it takes this more in-depth, organized, long-form strategy or approach to get across the messages in the way that I think they're important. So it's not like vlog type material. So that's, been hard. Did I already mention the podcast? I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Second of all, we've been working on both Fight For Together podcasts, which you guys have seen on this channel, but also this other channel called Everyone Belongs, where we're telling our spiritual story. And that's been a story that we've kept under wraps for a number of years now, but has heavily impacted our lives and even the content you see on this channel, but we're now just starting to come out with that. So if you're interested in that, the link is in the description below. And I would say the final thing that has been hard for me, I didn't even tell you we're talking about this, but it's that there's been a lot of changes that have been going on with our lives and with our family and with our kids and in our marriage that we are not prepared to talk about yet on this channel. But they're happening to us in real life. So they take over a lot of our brain space, our emotional space. But not only that, the further that our vlog gets from reality or authenticity, the more frustrated I get because I feel like I'm being kind of fraudulent. And fragmented. Yeah, and it's not that I feel like I owe people on the internet, like. These vlogs are not a complete picture of our lives at all. And I think the things that we present, they're not fake, they're real. Um, we actually believe them, but it's not complete. And I'm okay with that, but I feel like there's things in our lives that I'm currently working through how to communicate, mostly in writing, that I'm like, man, I really don't want people to feel either betrayed or confused or like we are being manipulative. So I have a hard time putting out content when I don't feel like we're telling the whole story. And I just, that's been really tough for me. Hmm. And there's not much I can do about it because I'm not trying to like lead you on. We're just not ready to talk about it. We're still experiencing it. Just kind of like in our spiritual side of things, we experienced these things for like two or three years before we shared about them because they were just like so fragile and sensitive. And I think these other areas in our life are that way right now but yeah. it's hard because our product, which are vlogs, 
they come across and some people think that they're completely transparent and 100% authentic and comprehensive and they feel like, like people feel like they know our lives and know us from watching these and I wanna be like, you don't actually know us or anyone on the internet for that matter that's putting out yeah. stuff. They only show you what they want you to see. And there's no way to show everything even if you wanted to. So, we have a kind of a change of plan here coming up uh, for the vlog. Because what's been happening is I feel like it's been the last thing on my priority list. We get episodes out, usually when we get around to it, it's been inconsistent and the content's been all over the place. But there's one consistent thing we've heard from you guys from the beginning, it's that you guys want to see the kids more. I saw this as an opportunity, instead of quitting the vlog, for a time period or taking a break of giving the kids a chance and saying, hey, do you guys wanna take over this channel and take the money and take the responsibility and just put out some videos like once a week, like a kid is in charge of it. And, and some of the kids said, yeah, they do wanna do that. Take, each kid takes a day of yeah. the week. So what that could look like is we have three kids that are interested in that and those three kids do a day a week and then maybe we do a day a week. So mm -hmm. you get like three or four episodes. And then if you're interested in the other channels, there's videos coming up there. So that's the plan. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of cool actually, like we're gonna test it out for a month or so. It could be a rocky and weird transition, but I just wanted you guys to know like what's going on and what we've been up to. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting because you're gonna get a lot of different flavors of our family. Uh, because these vlogs are going to be coming from the perspective of different people, like five different people every week. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> it's something. like really going to be letting go for me because mm -hmm. in the beginning, this is my baby. And I watched each episode probably like four or five times. And I would cut out like seconds to get it. Everyone is below 12 minutes and they were all like, you know. Yeah. And then the last month, I, there's a lot of episodes I haven't even watched. Like Eden's been like putting them out. Mm-hmm. And I don't even, like, I've never even seen them. <laughs> um, like, you see the content if you're filming it, but yeah, uh, not you don't see the finished thing. Yeah. yeah. All right, you guys ready for part two of this vlog episode? Uh, you guys see that we are passionate about sex education for a number of reasons. I don't think we received a lot of it, and sex has been an important part of our life and relationship and we have six kids and we want them to have a healthy understanding of their own sexuality and just and just about sexuality in general and the ability to navigate <clears throat> like sexual decisions moving forward so we did something that i know is going to be controversial to some of you but i wanted to talk about why in the hopes that it would at least continue the discussion as we're all making difficult decisions as parents. This Sunday, we have a family, we call it a family teaching time. It's at 10 a.m. and I'm in charge of it. I don't usually teach, but usually I pick some sort of material that we all listen to or watch together and then we talk about it and that takes about an hour. Now this Sunday, we watched, it was on Netflix and it's this show called Goop Lab with Gwyneth Paltrow. It's like I said, it's on Netflix. And she has this whole series. And this one episode in particular is titled The Pleasure Is Ours. And it's all about women. And do you wanna you're a woman, um, you wanna talk about? <clears throat> well, it's about women understanding and taking ownership of their their own sexuality and their own pleasure in the sex in their sexuality and so it talks about this lady who's been helping women do this since the 70s she's like i don't know in her 90s or something and it, it really doesn't shy away from showing vulvas from showing or people having orgasms things that are only shown with porn or maybe like in the movies in like a weird glorified kind of way. Okay, that sounds really weird though, what you just said. I know, I mean, that's why I'm, it, it, it is. It is weird because <laughs> those things are only for certain 
things in our culture. I know, but I think you got, we got to say like uh, how it shows them because okay. it shows an orgasm. This sounds weird to say, but it shows yeah. an orgasm in an, in a context that's not meant to arouse the viewer. It's not like a yeah, steamy Hollywood no, sex scene. No, it's, it's, it's very this clinical. Lady try, yeah, it's very clinical. It's this lady helping this other lady understand her body and how to achieve an orgasm in a way that's like, anyway, it's, I don't fully understand it, but like, it's, yeah, it's not like, it is very clinical. And it just like shows her face. Like it doesn't even show her body parts. So it's not a porno flick. But because that's not the point. But in yeah. a way, you—it's an educational video. But in a way, you see her face and you know what's happening, and something about it, I think, feels wrong. It feels taboo. Like, oh, we shouldn't be watching this, especially with our kids. I think it's really been an interesting journey to ask, well, why? Like, is that okay? And what are the consequences of shielding our kids from this stuff? Like. And them never seen other than like if they look at porn, they they, are, they never see someone else have an organ. I mean, it's just like so hidden. Like this part of our our lives and our ourselves is so hidden away. I think we spent the first thirty years of our life being very aware of the dangers of overexposing our kids. So we spent most of our energy trying to protect them from porn, trying to protect them from learning about sex too quick or being interested too quick. And I think for the last 10 years, we've become more aware of the dangers of not being a part of that conversation with our kids and kind of believing most of our kids know more than we know. Like there's plenty of resources out there with the internet and rap music and friends and just like stuff. So I would rather be a part of the conversation and start to establish the type of relationship where the kids feel comfortable coming to us and asking us about questions as early as possible, mm -hmm. even if it's going to err on the side of overexposure. Now, what was weird about this, because, and we did this like just in this room right here, co-ed, like all sexes, all kids, all ages, because we don't believe sex is like wrong or bad or gross, or it's it's weird that even that word like or family- needs to be hidden. Yeah. That, I mean, I think that's what a lot of the sticking point will be with people like, yeah, I don't, I agree it's not wrong or gross, but it needs to be hidden. Well, I saw something online this last week that said like, oh, uh, like even just that word family friendly, people like think, a picture of a naked human is not family friendly. It's not family friendly. Which is like so weird when you think about the amount of weird twisted morality that would say a body is mm -hmm. wrong for a certain age. But what we observed, yeah. some of our kids were uncomfortable and we talked about that. Mm -hmm. You know, they said that wasn't comfortable for me to watch. And they had the choice if they wanted to be a part of it. And then the smaller kids, like, they don't even like care like it's not even interesting to them <laughs> because it's not being glorified it just is kind of people and humans expressing emotions and showing physiology mm -hmm. anyways we had this discussion afterwards and it opened up the door to talk about our story and to answer some questions and to have our kids share you know they said i think I don't know whether it's our culture or whether it's what we've taught them in the past, but they view some of their body parts as gross or dirty. And I just think that's a really normal thing. But I actually believe it's a tragic thing and I believe it's a preventable thing mm -hmm. now. Well, and I, you talked about in the past, we would overprotect or we would protect our kids from sexual things or sexuality. But the real cost of that, I think, is like sending the message that there's something wrong with my body and that's why we can't look at bodies. You know, there's something wrong. That's why we can't even talk about it um, in a way that's not weird. Yeah, we, even our language, we say like private parts and we say like down there. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like we treat it. At, so what we've learned is you can say body parts aren't dirty as much as you want, 
But what you don't say, what you do, what you is do. way more yeah. powerful than what you say. So if you say, oh yeah, there's nothing wrong with that, but then you never, ever, ever talk about it or look at it with your kids, the message I think they're gonna get is there's something wrong with that. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you're sending it loud and clear. Cause you'll yeah. talk, we'll talk about everything else. But when it comes to vaginas or penises or sex or acts, orgasms, it's like there's this thing where it's like, I just realized this video is gonna get completely demonetized. <laughs> There goes that, <laughs> 20 bucks. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. And I really wanted to say like, we've come a long way in this. And I think, I mean, talk about how it's what you do. I mean, most of my parenting, I modeled that there was something wrong with sex and something wrong with sexuality. and. And so it's it's taken a lot of work to even get to where I'm at today. And I really do think it takes work. Like I think it takes work to go against the tide of our culture. And then if you're brought up in a more purity religious culture, it's even harder for you. But like some of the examples of just like saying vulva or saying vagina or saying penis out loud it sounds silly, but it actually, I think there's a lot of, it's just interesting how hard that is for a lot of people to do. And it's even hard for me to do in front of this camera because it's just, in our culture, it's just weird saying those, those words. They're just not said in a serious, like, matter of fact way. It's, it's always like charged somehow, either like as a joke or charged sexually or something. Yeah, I think what we did on Sunday, that was like, for us, like master's education level type stuff. Cause we'd been at this for years. Yeah. And I remember we started talking with our kids. Well, when we first became more transparent, it was like really awkward and really weird. Yeah. But we stuck with it. And now this was, there was some weird moments. Yeah. But the kids like knew what was up. And we talked about it that morning. We talked about it again at dinner. We answered questions. People were honest with, each other and us. And I think the more exposure you have and even your kids have to these kinds of conversations, the easier it gets. So definitely expect your first conversation, your first dozen conversations to be hard. And I think one of the things we've learned with some of the practices we've done, with, with we've practiced like nudism, Kimmy and I have like gone to nudist resorts and stuff. And We've learned that not all nudity has to be sexual. And actually the, the opposite also, not all sexuality involves nudity. So there's ways to view nudity in educational formats and it doesn't need to be arousing, it doesn't need to be sexual. So I know that most of the people, like I would recommend this video for everyone in our culture actually. So I'm gonna put the link to the Netflix series um, down below and I hope people check it out. Now, the next level will be watching it with your kids or maybe one of your kids or maybe even your spouse, I don't know. And I know most people are not gonna do this and I'm totally fine with that. But I do want to pose these questions for people, okay? If you're not gonna expose your children to nudity and with them, the question I would ask is, who do you want them to be exposed, for them to be exposed to nudity with? Is it like their spouse on their wedding night? Is that what you think is gonna happen? Or is it their peer group from school? Or is it like the weird uncle that touches them in a situation that you don't want? Like if it's, I understand that it's weird and awkward. Like I don't wanna do it well, in a lot of ways. I've come to terms, and that's kind of a negative way to put it, but like we're sexual beings, like everyone is. <laughs> And at a certain point in someone's like age, you know, whether it's 12, 13, 14, 15, whatever it is, that that is like awakened in them and they can feel it. And so either either they have to like push it down and different personalities do different things, or they will go explore it on their own. And like Ben said, like as a parent, you have to kind of decide like, okay, if they're gonna go do this on their own anyways, you know, do I want to be a part of this or not? 
And finally, if people aren't gonna do it, I'm totally fine with that, like I said. I'm not trying to convince anyone. But I also want us to be honest about why we're not having these conversations with our kids. Because it's easy to fall back and I think these phrases like, that's not appropriate, or that's weird. Okay, like that's fine, but sometimes that's just an excuse to not deal with the hard parts of reality. Mm -hmm. And basically we're saying, kid, you're on your own in this area or go find someone else. And I just think we need to be honest, if we're not gonna do it for whatever reason, that we are saying you are on your own, because that's the reality of what's gonna happen. Yeah. Or I guess you find something that feels better to you, like that feels more appropriate, I don't know. Yeah, another way, but kids have nakedness. They have their own body parts, and at some point, I mean, unless they're like living in a box, they're gonna be exposed to others and they're gonna have questions and fears and wonders and confusion and excitement. You know, it's not all negative. And as parents, you know, this channel is called Fight For Together. I think one of the things we want is to let our kids know that we're available to them in the highest points in their life and in the lowest points in their life and everywhere in between and get to a place, that's where through our counseling and our own experience, where we can be available. So even if you're not able to be available right now, I think that's fine. You could say, you know what, this is weird, this is hard, I can't do this, but sometimes it's better to take ownership over that instead of blame some code that mm -hmm. just kind of creates almost a victim mentality and prevents further growth. Okay, um, wow, I don't know what's gonna happen with this. People are gonna freak out. No problem. So I'm gonna post a link to this. I would love to hear what you guys think. Um, I think. <laughs> Do I wanna hear? Do I wanna know? Even if you just watch it yourself. Even, I just want people to be honest. Like what is your, how, what's your feelings around that? What, are you interested in it? Are you not and why? But yeah, I'm not really interested in people just scolding us and telling us how to parent, but I am definitely interested in if people have a hard time with this and why, or if this sounds like a good idea to them, that kind of thing. All right, see you guys next time. <laughs>